most people, when they think of Nevada, they think of Reno, Las Vegas, hotel casinos, glitz, gaming, lights, and everything in between is just wasteland, but it's not. If they'd taken the time to actually get into Nevada, to walk up into the mountains, to even walk out and explore that desert, and to look under their feet, they would discover an incredible world, a natural world that has been traditionally overlooked. My name is Kirk Peterson. I'm the inventory coordinator for the Friends of Nevada Wilderness. Right here, of course, we're in the Volcanic Hills unit. And then what we see is that Immigrant Peak area, that beautiful, beautiful multicolored volcanic hills. And then in the distance is Lone Mountain. Yeah. So what we've got is wilderness, 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 totally accessible by all these really well-developed roads around it. Friends of Nevada Wilderness was established in 1984 to promote the idea of the wild and natural side of Nevada, the other side of Nevada that, that most people don't take the time to look or explore. Since the mission of Friends of Nevada Wilderness involves wilderness advocacy, that mission includes working very closely with the BLM to provide information about lands with wilderness characteristics and to make sure lands with wilderness characteristics are being protected. How did they make this? My name is Julian Pellegrini. I'm a science teacher and a fifth generation Nevadan. Friends of Nevada Wilderness hired me to look at recording species lists in proposed wilderness areas. We're looking at central Nevada to designate certain wilderness areas because they have rich desert biodiversity and encompass very fragile desert ecosystems. The areas that we're in here are the volcanic hills, the immigrant peak area, and silver peak area. A lot of insects. As for my own personal part, I spend the days hiking around, identifying bird species, insect species. I walk around at night with a black light looking for scorpions. Bighorn would look for a spot like this. Their only real defense is to go up, and they know what's on the top of the hill. It's just right above us. But from here, it'd be hard for any predator to get near them, and they have an excellent lookout that covers the whole valley down below them. So it's a pretty secure spot. A lot of my interests in the outdoors and in biology and in education came from growing up with a father who was deeply interested in these things and in these areas and taking me out on the weekends hiking in these hills and the hills around Mason Valley. I think these areas exhibit a very rich quality of Nevada that is in a lot of places all but lost. I can go on a hike for three days or four days into an area that's designated wilderness and know that I'm not going to hear the motor of a vehicle or four-wheelers or that sort of thing. What I'm walking down is evidence of old mining exploration operation. In fact, here's the claim post right here. What we have is bulldozers came down or a bulldozer came down and took the top surface off just to see what was underneath, to see if there was some mineral potential that was economically feasible. This happened before we had mining reclamation laws for the federal lands, so no one ever reclaimed it. But as you can see, it's actually starting to reclaim itself. There's about 30 years of growth, and most of this is native vegetation. Because of this idea that there's always something to be found out there, many people will resist the idea of setting aside some of the land that's left that still has natural integrity. The economy has always been based on mining, and it's an economy that cycles from boom to bust. We have to find something that's sustainable. There's another wealth in Nevada, and it is the wealth of the natural integrity, the wealth of open spaces, the wealth of wilderness, the wealth of solitude. And this is a wealth that you can actually access, utilize, and make a living from. Morning, Donna. Good afternoon, John. How's it? My name is John McCormick. I'm the general manager of the Mizpah Hotel in Tonopah, Nevada. People coming up and down the, uh, the highway here would find this a great stop-off point for them, certainly coming to the Mizpah with all of its grandeur and glory. Between uh, Las Vegas and Reno, we sit right in the middle, and there's just some tremendous things for people to see along the way. This is um, very typical of the way most people experience Nevada is from these roads. I tell you, if you go two miles that direction, that won't get you even halfway to the base of those mountains. And by that time, all of this stuff goes, and you're in a land that is completely dominated by natural processes. 
Growing up, people always would talk about a place in Nevada where a person could feel that they were the first person there in the last maybe 150 years, and that's what wilderness offers. The light never is the same, the ground is never the same. It always is under a constant state of change. I have never not been surprised at the diversity of plants, at the beauty, at the incredible landscapes, at the geology of each and every one of these areas we walk into. And we are only looking at a small fraction of what's in the state. There's so much more out there that needs to be looked at and explored and understood and documented. Those are the reasons that I'm out here is to maybe leave some legacy for future generations to try to designate wilderness and do my part for preservation of Great Basin wild places. They need to be preserved so that my kids and their kids would be able to come into these areas and be able to see the same things that my father showed me. And our goal is to get those identified, protected, and promoted for the values that they have. <laughs>